And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. My testimony about God is very simple. God has never done me anything wrong. All my blessings have come from God. All my problems I have brought on myself. And so I thank God publicly for always treating me nicely. And as I tell him sometimes, Father, if you need a letter of recommendation, let me write it. I'll use a diamond pen with golden ink and write on rose petals a letter of recommendation about how good God is. Let me write it because I know how good he is. Thank you for coming. Thank you for loving God. I assume you all do. Have I assumed correctly? Yes. All those of you who love God, can I see your hand? I think God is pleased. Thank you very much for loving my God. Who is present? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? Dr. Richard, good to see you. Anybody else? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. If you're shy, please break through your shyness. Just raise your hand. We'd like to recognize you. Anyone? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. We're always delighted to have guests among us. I believe we are online. Let me welcome the online listeners. Thank you very much for joining us. My prayer is that God will bless you as super abundantly as we believe he will bless us in this house. I am delighted to see little children sitting quietly, not running around the church. Thank you very much. God bless you. Many years ago, I was in Bangladesh for a week of prayer on the campus of an Adventist school. I spoke in the morning and in the evening, and there was a, an orphanage on the grounds. There were little children in the orphanage, four, five, six, three. And they came to the service in a straight line. They sat on the first two pews on every side. They never moved. Never went to the bathroom. They sat morning and evening, did not move. And I said, I'd never seen this before until now. <laughs> and so thank you, little boys and girls. Jesus wants you to give your life to him. And you may ask me, how do I do that? You simply say, Jesus, 
I give you my life. Come into my heart and lead me. And he will do exactly that. Our subject for this afternoon or this morning or whatever it is, eat to live. What did I say? Eat to live. This phone is off. I was checking, so I won't have to have someone tell me, physician, heal thyself. I'm asking those of you who uh, are not using your phones, please turn them off if you're not using them. You know, some friends of mine think I'm against uh, technology. I'm really not. But the rise of technology has corresponded with the decline in familiarity with the Bible. What do I mean? Many years ago, when Bible verses were not put on screens or found on phones, people knew the books of the Bible. All 66 in order. They could find texts and not need half an hour to find Genesis 1-1. But today, that's not the case. Because everything is right here. I don't need to know where the books are. It's right here. Technology is fine. We thank God for it. That's why people can listen all over the world. But don't let technology reduce the degree to which you use this. Use this. Use it. Because if God doesn't come quickly, you'll become 70, 80, 90, and this may start to decline prematurely. There is, for me, you see, I, uh, my medication for strong mind is to fill my mind with the word of God and the writings of Ellen White. That's my protection against cognitive decline. This treatment has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, but it works for me. Mm. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Those are the words I desire to speak. And favor number three, think. As you listen, Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together. The first text was Jeremiah 1.9. I hope that's what I said. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. For thinking, Isaiah 1.18. Let's pray. Father, thank you very much for allowing me to live. I thank you. You've given me a sound mind. Good health. I can see. I can walk. I can talk. I can smell. I can hear. I'm not in prison. I thank you for these blessings. But the greatest blessing of all, I thank you for giving me a knowledge of Jesus Christ. I really thank you, dear God. I ask you to bless your sons and your daughters gathered in your presence. You love them to a degree they cannot understand. You desire to save them. You cannot save them in sin. You desire to save them from sin. I pray you tell me what to say, that they might be blessed. But before they're blessed, that you might be glorified. Bless all those online, dear God. Teach them as you teach us. Wherever they are, bless them. Bless the United States of America, dear God. We know what prophecy says about this nation, but bless it and make your people a blessing in it. Every other country represented by those watching online, bless those countries, I pray. Now, Father, let us concentrate our minds on the word of God. Touch the sick, I pray, a special blessing on all our guests. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, amen and amen. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2. We'll read from verse 7. It is now 7 minutes to 12. It's now 7 minutes to 12. Do you have Genesis uh, 2? Is that what I said? We read 7 to 9. When you found that, say amen. If you have the King James Version, you may read with me. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. 
And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's concentrate on one of those two trees. There are only three trees mentioned by name in the first three chapters of Genesis. The tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and of course the fig tree from which Adam and Eve got the leaves to make the aprons. We're looking at the tree of life. God made it. It was to provide food for Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve sinned. Let's go to chapter 3. Let's read from verse 7. Our subject, eat to live. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Why were they hiding? Because they had now been infected by sin. And the natural behavior of sin is to avoid God. Let me say that again. Sin avoids God. It might not avoid church. It avoids God. Sin does not like holiness. Sin does not like righteousness. And so they hid from God. In their fallen condition, there are some privileges God withheld from them. One of them we'll identify now by going to verse 22 of Genesis 3. As a result of their fallen condition. The Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and take and eat forever. God is saying, in his condition as a sinner, we've got to keep him away from the tree of life. Because if he eats from that physical tree, he will be a sinner forever. So God's evicting of Adam and Eve was an act of love. Nobody said amen. God's evicting of Adam and Eve was an act of mercy. Lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And the Hebrew word also means divorce. The word drive out. Divorce. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That life was protected. They were barred from accessing the fruit. Ellen White makes a very, very interesting statement. In Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60, paragraph 3, what did I say? All right, don't die on me. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60, paragraph 3. Test your memory. What did I say? In order to possess an endless existence, man must continue to partake of the tree of life. You see, only God naturally has immortality. The unfallen angels in heaven depend on God for life. Only God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are self-sustaining. They are eternal. I was talking to some friends of mine and I said to them, you know, God doesn't live. God just is. <laughs> because to live, you need oxygen. You need food. Whatever. God doesn't need anything. God just is. 
the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Each one just is, but everything in creation depends on God, including unfallen angels in heaven. And so Ella White writes, in order to partake of an endless existence, man must continue to partake of the tree of life. Deprived of this, his vitality would gradually diminish until life should become extinct. This reference was to Adam before he sinned. It was God's plan that through all the ages of eternity, created beings would have to eat of the tree of life. That's why it's called the tree of life. But now Adam has been barred from access to that tree. But Adam is still alive. What life does Adam have as he leaves the garden? Physical life. What life was that tree supposed to preserve and maintain? Yes, a higher kind of life. Adam lost access to that. And after 930 years, he died. Methuselah, 969, he died. Noah, 950, he died. Question for you. Can we access that tree now? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'd like to give you A plus because A is for Adventists, but you have to answer me carefully. <laughs> Can we access that tree now? No. Where's the tree? It's above. Eloi tells us God took it just before the flood, took it up. He'll bring it back more beautiful. You and I cannot access that fruit. Go to Revelation 22. We'll read from verse 1. Just go as quick as you can. It is 12 o'clock on the dot. You have Revelation 22? <laughs> we read from verse 1. Has anyone said yet, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? Ah, thank you. May God bless you. And for those of you who are attractively stubborn, please pray for me. And ask God to put his words in my mouth. I mean that very seriously. Revelation 22 verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear, pure, clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was what? Tree of life. In the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river. And otherwise said it was connected at the top. Was a tree of life. It was in the garden, it will be restored in the new world. But between then and then, we cannot physically access that tree of life. But the life it gave is the life we need. So we're in a uh, quandary, to use a fancy word. There's a problem. I need that life, I can't get to it. There is another way to get to the tree of life. Let's go to John. John 6. You have John 6. Let's read from verse 51. Our subject, eat to live. I recommend John to you very highly. It is written by the disciple who was closest to Christ and of whom Eloi tells us of all the 12 disciples, he most perfectly reflected the character of Christ. No wonder all the other 11 suffered horrible deaths. He alone died a natural death. The Lord spared him and then the Lord gave him the revelation that you and I study so diligently. Do we study it diligently? All right. John 6, 51, read with me. I am what? The living bread which came down from heaven. Stop. Let's think. If there is a living bread, there must be dead bread. Let's extend that reasoning. See if you can agree with me. Go to John 15. Let's read verse 1. 
Read with me. I am the true vine. Then there must be a false vine. Go to John 17. Let's read verse 3. Read with me. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, which means there must be a false God. There is living water, which God or Christ gave the woman at the well, which means there is dead water. All right. We go back to John 15, uh, not John 15, verse 6, sorry. Not John chapter 6, from verse 51. You have that? I am the living bread, which came down from where? From heaven. You see, life comes from above and comes down. Let me uh, explain that differently. Listen to Revel, uh, Genesis 2, 7. No, you don't have to go there. Don't lose John. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the what? Mm -hmm. The dust was not from heaven. The dust was from beneath. The breath of life was from above. That's why we're told in uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 7, at death, that breath goes back. And the physical part of it goes this way. That's why those who believe when you die, you go to heaven, they are dead wrong. You did not come from heaven. You go back to your origin, which is dirt. The breath goes that way. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. No life originates from the earth. Nobody's listening. Let me show it to you differently. Go to Genesis 1 quickly. I hope you don't mind I'm taking you from verse to verse. I want to speak God's words. You have Genesis 1. Let's read from verse 14. The creation of the sun, the moon, the stars. When were they made? On what day? Quickly. The fourth day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Genesis 1.14. You have my version. Read it with me. And God said, let there be lights. In the firmament of the heaven to do what? Divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. Why? To give light. Where? Upon the earth. Keep reading. God created or God made what? Two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So we have sun, moon, and stars. All right. Reason with me, you're God's people. Where's the sun? Quickly. Above, in heaven. Where are the stars? In heaven. Where's the moon? In heaven. In order then for the earth to have light, where must that light come from? Heaven. There is no source of light for the earth on the earth. I'm never coming back to Dunlap. <laughs> Let me say it again. There is no source of light for the earth that's situated on the earth. But let's take a, take a look at light. Hmm? There want, there's, there's no source of light for the earth that's on the earth. Let's strengthen that biblically. Go to John chapter 1 as quickly as you can. Who found it? Nobody. Ah, oh, God bless you. You're very handsome. You remind me. Ah, nice little boy. Are you going to be a preacher when you grow up? I hope so. John 1. Let's read from verse 1. Now say the first three verses without looking, please. Come on, say it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, listen to verse 4. In him was life. Come on. And the life was the light of men. And so light symbolizes life. Go to John 8. John 8. Let's read verse 12. John 8, verse 12. 
Read with me. What does that say? They speak, Jesus, get unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Light represents life. Now, the Bible says, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they were to give light, but they also symbolize life. All of this came from John 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my life, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 53, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Finish the verse. Ye have no life. What's our subject? Eat to live. And we're trying to solve the problem. How can I access the life of the tree of life when I can't get to the tree of life? Because the life it provides is the life I need. The tree of life doesn't provide one kind of life. And Jesus gives me another kind. Except ye eat the flesh of the son of man. And drink his blood. Ye have no life. But Christ was saying that to people who were living. How were they alive? Physically. But spiritually dead. Go to John chapter 5. Let's read verse 40. 4 zero. Our subject, eat to live. 10 after 12. I hope our friends online are still with us. John 5, verse 40. This is a painful expression from Jesus Christ to hard-headed scribes and Pharisees. Read that verse. And you will not come to me, finish the verse, that he might have life. But they were living. They were alive, but physically, not spiritually. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. And this verse applies not just to ladies, although a woman is mentioned. It applies to men and women, to people. 1 Timothy chapter 5, let's read verse 6. You have it? Read with me, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth physically alive but in desperate need of the life provided by the tree of life which she cannot reach spiritually dead let's try to solve the problem how then can you and i access that tree of life let's keep reading verse 54 of john 6 Give you five seconds to find it. One, two, three. Do you have it? Four. All right. Read with me. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, come on, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now listen again. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. But the Bible tells us don't drink blood. So clearly Christ is not talking about his physical flesh and his physical blood. We have to think higher. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So we have eating, and we have life, our subject, eat to live. Now look at verse 63. Are you there? Read this one very clearly. Read with me. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Stop. What does the word quickeneth mean? To give life. Very good on this side. To give life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Keep reading. The words 
that I speak unto you, and the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, finish that verse. They are spirit. Which life? Eternal life. The same life, the tree of life preserves, is available to us through the word of God. But we have to eat and drink. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life. Thoughts on the Mount of Blessing, page 61, paragraph 2. God is a life giver. And we can have life only as we are in communion with him. Separated from God, existence may be ours for a little time. But we do not possess life. I have to say that again. God is the life giver. And we can have life only as we are in communion with him. Or oh, God is the fountain of life. We can only have life as we are in communion with him. Separated from God. Existence may be ours for a little time. But we do not possess life. Which means in Dunlap there are a lot of living people who are actually dead. Running around Dunlap, dead as a dodo. No spiritual life. The life the tree provides is accessible to us through the word of God. Somebody say amen for the word. Listen to this powerful statement, Evangelism, page 138, paragraph 4. What did I say? All right, you sound like the Tower of Babel. All right, Evangelism 138, paragraph 4. Ellen White writes, The word of God is our sanctification and righteousness because it is spiritual food. To study it is to eat the leaves of the tree of life. Six people said amen. To study this, of course, and obey it is to eat the leaves of the tree of life. Amen. Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 957, paragraph 7, Ellen White writes, Must we wait until we are translated before we eat of the leaves of the tree of life? He who receives into his heart the words of Christ knows what it means to eat the leaves of the tree of life. The life that Christ gives to us is in his word. By the way, these things are called leaves. <laughs> so make sure you're getting your leafy vegetables every day. <laughs> I'm quite, quite serious. This is the means whereby life is given to us. But we learn this from Genesis 1. Go back to Genesis 1. Genesis 1, now that's an easy chapter to find. Genesis 1. <laughs> no, you don't need half an hour. No, you don't. Do you have Genesis 1? Let's read from verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding sea, and the fruit yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so now. Is grass and are trees living things? How were they made? By the word. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're living things and they were made by the word, the word must contain life. It cannot be measured in a, a science laboratory somewhere. But God says it. Go to verse 20 of Genesis 1. Our subject, eat to live. 18 minutes after 12. Yeah, verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Now, how were they made? By the word of God. 
Are fowls alive? Yes. Are whales alive? Yes. All made by the word of God. The word of God has life. It is no wonder in Revelation 19 verse 13 the Bible says of Christ. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. The name of Jesus Christ is the word, which means, very frighteningly, the man or the woman who has no time for the word of God has no time for Jesus. And that person is on a death track. The word of God is life. You don't believe me. Well, I hope you believe the word. Go to John 11. John 11. And I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to study God's word. I really will. God will hold me responsible if I don't. Do you have John 11? We'll read verse 43 and 44. What's going on in John 11? The resurrection of Lazarus. Verse 43, read with me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Keep reading. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot. Now, Jesus said, Lazarus, what? Come forth. The next verse says, he that was dead came forth. Mm -hmm. How? Now, don't ask me to explain how that happens. I don't know. I don't know how I breathe at night without any conscious choice. But I'm glad I do. I don't know how a lot of things work, but I'm glad they do. I don't know how the word of Christ can raise a dead man, but it does. One of our favorite verses of Seventh-day Adventists is 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, that's the word, with the voice of the archangel, the word, with the trump of God, the word, and the dead in Christ, final finish it, shall rise first. Those three statements, a shout, the voice of the archangel, trump of God, this simply means he will say something loudly. And the first man who ever died on this earth, as the Bible records, What's his name? Abel. Abel. If anyone is dirt, it's Abel. He will come up. Just because God spoke words. Now, would you like to intimidate the devil? Well, don't run around looking for him. Don't do that. But if he comes to you, and he will come to you, he came to Christ. Here's how to scare him half to death. Go to Matthew 8. Then we'll go to talk to Brother Peter, see what he has to say. Matthew 8, we read verse 16. Our subject, eat to live. And we're eating the word of God that we may access the life from the tree of life. Matthew 8, 16, do you have that, yes or no? Read with me if you have my version. And when the even was come, they brought unto him, what? Many that were possessed with? And he cast out the spirits. How? With his word. This is your defense against Satan. It does not prevent him from tempting. It prevents you from falling. Christ was tempted. He never fell. Now, let's stay with the word. Let's look at two verses. Back to back. James 4, 7, 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. You have 10 fingers, and one finger for James, one for 1 Peter. James 4, verse 7, 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. We just read Matthew 8, 16, he cast out the spirits with his word. James 4, verse 7. You have that? Some of you are still looking frantically. I'll give you five more seconds. Do you have it now? Okay. <laughs> have my handsome young brother looking, looking. Somebody show mercy and help him find it. Before the sun sets. Okay. He hasn't found it yet. <laughs> James 4, verse 7. I'll wait, I'll wait. That's my young brother. I love him a lot. Handsome man. James 4, verse 7. Ah. Say amen. 
Okay. okay. Read with me now. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Keep reading. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, how do you resist? By making a face? Mm -mm. Peter tells us how to do that. Go to 1 Peter 5 now. That's right after James, Dr. Adam, so you shouldn't get too lost in the woods. 1 Peter 5, <laughs> okay, verses 8 and 9. Do we have that? Read with me. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, verse 9 carefully, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Where's the faith? This. James tells us, resist. Peter tells us, how? The word, steadfast. Not just study the word on Sabbath afternoon. Seven days a week. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? Let me digress a little bit from eat to live. Let me tell you something about God, you, and Satan. Who are the three principles? God, me, and Satan. Satan hates the presence of God. Is that clear? He hates it. When you get close to God, I mean close, <laughs> he will try to avoid you as well. Are you with me? Because you're too close to God. It makes it very touch, very touchy for him. How can I? This, this man is too close to God. And I hate the presence of God. And he's right in the presence of God. Let me wait till he comes out. Mm. What's our subject? This contains a life in the tree of life. I'm not referring to this piece of paper or the ink, black or red. I'm referring to what it says. Thus saith the Lord. You know, Ellen White writes in, uh, I think it's uh, Ministry of Healing, page 358, 458, paragraph 2. The reason why the youth and even those of mature years like me and some of you are so easily led into temptation and sin is because they do not study the word of God and meditate upon it as they should. This. This is the life that you and I will live if we're faithful in the new world. But we must live this life here first. You don't become spiritual in heaven. You become heavenly on this earth first. Are you following me? This life, Ellen White writes somewhere, the last day on earth is no different from the first day in heaven. And so our subject, eat to live. What shall we eat? The word of God. This boosts spiritual immunity at every level. This cleanses the soul from toxins. This barricades the soul against the enemy. This clears up the vision and gives you 20-20 vision so you rise above seeing. Now you function at the level of discernment. When Christ was tempted, and I'm close to finishing, let's go to Matthew 4. We read from verse 1. We're closing the subject Eat to live. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him. By the way, Christ did not go to the wilderness looking for Satan. But he knew Satan would come. Never go looking for the devil. Don't go looking for demons to cast out. <clears throat> Don't do that. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, Matthew 4 verse 4, Tell me what Jesus said. 
it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Let's condense this word now. Condense it. If Adam had not sinned, listen carefully. Let me pray again. Father, I'm coming to the end. Continue to speak through me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If Adam had not sinned, and Eve, and they were made secure, all the children would have been sinless. Would there have been a need for the Bible? No. Would there have been a need for the sacrifice on Calvary? No. Would the Ten Commandments still be in force? Yes. Then, what really counts are the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Is the law of God for heaven and earth? Listen to me carefully. If there had never been sin, we would still have the Ten Commandments, but no Bible. And so if you were to boil the Bible, after a few hours of boiling, what you'd have left in that pot are the Ten Commandments. Mm. Now Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Now Elohite writes in Spiritual Gifts, volume 4a, page 150, paragraph 1. No need to tell me what I just said. Here's what she says. Christ refers to his father's law. The words spoken on Sinai are the conditions of life. So when Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word meant every commandment. Because the commandments were ordained to life, Romans 7 verse 10. They were ordained to life, but for the sinner, they function as instruments of death. Because the wages of sin is death, and sin is the violation of the law. But to the obedient person, it's a principle of, there are ten principles of life. There are ten promises of life. If there had been no sin, there would still be the Ten Commandments. In the world to come, we will still have the law. Eat to live. The law of God is righteousness. Let me say it again. God's law is just written righteousness. The life of Christ is lived righteousness. The law writes it. Jesus said, that's what the law means. Watch my life. Then when we accept Christ, the same must be said of us. What the law says, that's what you see Christ doing in me. So when you eat, eat to live. The commandment was ordained to life for the obedient. If Adam, listen to Romans 5 verse 19, no need to go. For as one man's disobedience, disobeyed what? The law. Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Study the word. Ellen White writes in councils. On Sabbath school work, page 43, paragraph 2. Study the word and practice the word. It is your life. Amen. Study the word and practice the word. It is your life. Amen. Education, page 126, paragraph 4. Listen very carefully. The creative energy that called the world into existence is in the word of God. This word imparts power. It begets life. Every command is a promise. Accepted by the will, received into the soul, it brings with it the life of the infinite one. Who is that? God. This brings his life. It has his life. It transforms the nature and recreates the soul in the image of God. What am I saying? God's life is in his word. God's character is in his word. The righteousness of God is in his word. No wonder the Bible tells us in Psalm 138 verse 2, Thou hast magnified thy word 
Come on, somebody finish it. Above all thy name. Study this. I call heaven and earth to witness now. I'm appealing to you. Study this. And obey it. Someone wrote me last night. If I am broke or something like that, I uh, need money for medication and rent, and, uh, do I still need to return a tithe? Capital Y, capital E, capital S, exclamation point. Yes. Obedience is life. Study, obey, is eat and swallow. Don't let it stay in the stomach. Because you can vomit up something in the stomach. You cannot vomit up something in the cells. Uh, nobody's listening to me. Uh, all morning I'm talking to myself. Cellular material cannot be regurgitated. This word needs to get where? To the cells. Then that's when change takes place. You don't study it for degree. You study it for change in your life. You know, Jesus told the disciples in John 15, 3, Now you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. This is what will sustain us whom God allows to live in the time of trouble. Because we look around, no one else is doing what's right. Now how can you know, 7 billion people be wrong? Everyone else is keeping Sunday. I must be wrong. But you ask yourself, what does the Bible say? It says the seventh day. I told a couple of people, was it this morning or yesterday? I don't remember when. You see this phone case? What color is it? <laughs> but if the Bible says it's white, even though you see, even though you see, come on, even though you see, you should say, why? Because the Bible says it's white. That's the faith God needs. A faith that looks reckless. A faith that tells a man, you have a, a, an addiction, the word of God can break it if you cooperate with, he can, the word can break it. Psalm 119, verse 133, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Let me not be addicted to any sin. Order my steps in your word. This is life. Eat this too. How many of you will renew your commitment to study God's word? Can I see your hand? Are you serious? You know, when a preacher makes a call, if you don't respond, it doesn't make him feel badly. He makes the call because he has to. He wants to. He loves you or she. God requires that he or she make that call. So don't think I, ra I must raise my hand to make him feel good. Mm-mm. Most people never responded to Christ. Now, who can preach as effectively as Jesus? So I ask you again by way of confirmation, how many of you will renew your commitment to study the word of God? Can I see your hand? Stand up with me. Try this experiment. It works. If you have a temper... Find Bible verses that deal with anger. Memorize them. Say them during the day. Think about them. Three weeks. See what happens. If you have a problem with your enemies, get verses that deal with how we ought to treat our enemies. Love your enemy, Matthew 5, 44. Hmm? Memorize it. Say it. It will change you. Whatever the problem is, find a verse. You see, spiritual growth is a scientific process. Ella White frequently refers to the science of salvation, the science of prayer. There's a way to do it. If your problem is stealing or stinginess, you don't find a verse on remember the Sabbath day. No, that's not what you mean. You want a verse like, thou shalt not steal. 
You won't leave the deaconess alone. You need one that says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Are you with me? Make a new commitment to study the word of God and teach it to your children. Sin is sin at any age. When those men came to sodomize the angels in Genesis 90, the Bible says they were young and old. The old probably Kerm came to watch, to learn. <laughs> when the woman was about to be stoned by those men in John 8, the Bible says they went out from the eldest to the last. There are gangs in big cities where boys 11 and 12 will kill you. Sin has no age limits, nor does righteousness. Study the word. Obey it. Obey it. The word will transform your life. How many of you will make that commitment? Can I see your hand now? Hands down. Is there anyone listening to me? You need to make a decision to be baptized. You've not yet made it. Can I see your hand? You need to make it. You've not yet made it. But you need to make it. Nice, your hand. Okay, we know you. We've got. Yeah, you know. I know you did. You did, brother Richard. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Need to make that decision. Just make it. Let heaven and earth see where you stand. Heaven will smile. The devil will fuss and fume. But let him fuss and fume. Anybody else? I really need to be baptized. God bless you. Ah, God bless you. I like you. Anybody else? Let's pray now. Before I pray, any prayer requests? I mean, serious, not I have a runny nose, nothing like that. I mean, serious requests. Employment. employment, yes. As you pray, who said employment? Where's your hand? Okay. Remind God in the fourth commandment, six days shalt thou labor. He said work. Yes. Then you tell him, you want me to go bathe that? You provide it, please. But don't work on Sabbath. When you get your first paycheck, return a tithe and an offering. Because the whole paycheck really belongs to God. Somebody else, prayer request, serious ones. Say that again. Healing for the sick in the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. The family and your children, Richard. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, we must prepare ourselves to receive the latter rain. Yes, my young brother. Hmm? Wisdom, yes. You know what the Bible says of Jesus, a little boy, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. He was your age. God will give you wisdom. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we must yearn for that day when there will be no death, no sickness. Yes. Deliverance of a child from darkness. darkness. Okay, that's what Christ came to do. Yes. Set your children free. Christ came to set children free and adults because the devil does not let you go. That's why Christ has to break in. You know the strong man in Matthew 12 verse 29? He must bind the strong man, spoil his house, meaning his captives, because he will not let you go. You call Christ, Christ will come get you. A complicated health issue. With God, nothing will be impossible. God made the body. He knows what's complicated and what's not. For the youth, yes. Okay, for your family. True conversion. Yes, not just an outward display. True conversion. Okay, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Pray for the church, yes. Pray for the church. The church, yeah, pray for the church. God loves it, but it's in sad shape. Anybody else? Okay. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. Father, thank you for allowing me to speak for you. I'm sure I didn't do it very well, but uh, I hope you can still use what I did to continue to convict those who listened. If I said something I should not have said, forgive me, dear God. I ask you now, Father, in mercy and tender fatherly love, Bless those who listened. Father, I presented your word as the source of life. Your word is life. You created life by speaking the word. All the righteous dead shall be resurrected by the voice of Jesus Christ. 
as Lazarus was. Father, outside the word, there's no power. Outside the word, there's no light. Outside the word, there's no life. Outside the word, there's no victory. Everything you do, Father, is done through the word. And that's how we must live, by every word. Father, you heard all the prayer requests. You know the details. I'm asking you today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, intervene in every circumstance mentioned. Save those in, save those in spiritual peril. Provide employment for those who are unemployed. Give wisdom to my little brother. Remember the youth who need to wisdom, who need to be grounded in the truth. Remember families that are perhaps under spiritual attack, dear God. Remember someone on the job harassed by the supervisor. Whatever it may be, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, do something, dear God. Remind us how powerful you are. We tend to forget. Bless the church, dear God. Father, the church has come to a place where we cannot even recognize the world. We're so much like it. Open our eyes, Father, the spirit of discernment, that we may see our true condition and fly to the cross of Christ. Thank you, Father, for your endless patience toward us. Bless us right now, dear God, and continue to bless and I extend this prayer to those online. Hear my humble prayer, Father. As we eat physical food at the potluck, let's remember there are millions on earth who go hungry every day. Use us to bless others. Bring us back at 3 o'clock, I pray, for that service. In the name of Jesus Christ, let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated.